Yeah. But it's this idea, isn't it, that if you are in, quote, full-time service, you're really serving. If you're not, you're not. And, and, and that really isn't the case, is it, when we look at Scripture? Because God calls us all to the place where he wants us to be. Now, for you, uh, he's now, he's you're in London City Mission at the moment. I mean, I haven't done a day's work for 30 odd years or whatever. <laughs> uh, you know, Julie's just come. But it's important that we are all where we should be before mm -hmm. God and serving him there, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, for, for me, um, when, I, when I first thought about full-time Christian ministry, I thought it was, would have been the cream of the crop. You know, that, that is the highest echelon of Christian service. Um, but, you know, you realize as you grow up, um, which I needed to do when I was especially a teenager, was that God gives us uh, a work. And wherever he has placed us, there is a work to do. Um, there, there were two things I had learned last year, and that was one, a knock on a door can change a life. And number mm. two, that whatever God has put before me to do, I'll praise him for it. Mm. I, I hear about missionaries doing all sorts of works in the London City Mission, and I'm envious sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And I think, wow, look at the number of people they're meeting. Look at the yeah. churches that are behind them. Yeah. Look at the support they have. And they're up every, every, all the time telling us how great the work is. And you're like, <laughs> I want to do that. Yeah. I, I, feel like I'm, I, I feel like I'm failing. Yeah. I feel like maybe I'm not as holy or not as good it's or not as special. Thing, you know? Exactly. <laughs> I, I don't know how the servant felt with five talents and the yeah. servant with ten talents. And, you yeah. know, it wasn't about how many talents. It's what they did yes. Yes, with right. the talents. And what God, what God knew they could cope with. That's right. In the first place, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I mean, if, if God gave me like a, a Billy Graham crusade somewhere, I wouldn't cope. No, you right. know, but where I am, you can cope. God is using me. And I think where, God, where, where we are, we've got to say, how am I going to let God use me in this? And, and again, that that is a place to come to, isn't it? Because I, I, I know, I can remember back as a young Christian, you know, I, I, I hear what you're saying because I can remember thinking of this and that and the other and I want to be like this, I want to be like that. But, but God, uh, in the end, says, no, this is what you are. Mm. This is who you are. Mm. This is what I mm. want you to do. Yeah. And in the end, it's not to compare. It's to rejoice that somebody's bringing thousands of people to the That's Lord. That's right. Mm -hmm. But it's also to rejoice that God's placed me where I've been witnessing to this one person for five years, and they haven't come through yet, yeah. but boy, mm -hmm. God's placed me there. Yeah. And it, it is that, isn't it? it it's right. accepted where we are and what God has given us to do. That's Absolutely. right. Yeah, yeah. And, and accepting what mm. God's going to do with us Amen. in that place. You know, Because we have no idea what God's going to do with us um I, i've been reading a book uh, by jim packer knowing god and uh, this quote came to mind it, it's a quote i've used quite a while, a while and it says uh, knowing god is more than knowing about him mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's a matter of dealing with him as he opens up to us and being dealt with him as he takes knowledge of us you know God has placed us where we are so he can deal with mm. us, yes. what's going on in our lives at that point, <clears throat> and, and drawing out good fruit, mm. uh, getting rid of the, the dross, as it were, in the crucible. You know? And in the mm. crucible, it's hard, it's painful, it's, yes, it's, it it's, mm. it's, it's uh, like taking out a splinter from a finger, it's painful, but it has to be done. You yes. know? And, and we know that from, through it, after it, there is going to be something glorious, something that gl mm. gives glory to God, mm. something that is passionate and wonderful, Amen. you know, and anybody can do that. And we've, I've got one lady who helps me on the doors. She's 72. She's, her name's Frances, and she Frances. became a Christian uh, six <laughs> years ago. And <clears throat> she started out not knowing the Bible very well. She didn't like praying or talking out loud, very shy. But as she has opened herself up to the ministry of God, she has been coming on the doors of me. She's been doing work with me. She's, she's been actually ringing me up saying, when are we going out next? You know, and um, she, she's interested yeah. and she, she wants, she desires, she mm, thirsts. Yeah, mm, yeah. And she has questions. And I've always said to people, you know, always look for the questions. Mm. Search God and let mm, God search amen. you. Mm. Ha, I've got, got a, a, an email from Donna here, which... Is, is, is first of all just underlining something which you said at the beginning of the show, Julian, but it just brought up a whole number other aspect and it reminded me uh -oh. of the <laughs> early days of my wife and, 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 and what we felt and, and, 
uh, and maybe I think there are others that go through it. She said, so that's the deal, but, but you'll see what I'm saying as, as, as she goes through it. Let me just read it. Um, just wanted to email and say thanks for the brilliant program. I caught a segment in between dirty nappies uh-huh. <laughs> uh, where you were talking about going through troubled times. I want to say to everyone that any troubles we have on this earth are temporary. What joy we have to know that a beautiful, amazing future awaits us with our Saviour. No more loneliness, no more troubles, no more hard times, no more dirty nappies. How, uh, she doesn't say that, how amazing. Um, Hold on to that promise and give thanks through all your circumstances, even when it's hard to give thanks. Do it, and it's surprising how it builds you up. Love to all my Christians, brothers and sisters. Donna, P.S., you're rocking that waistcoat today. Thank you. Um, um, But it just reminded me, and what we were talking about here, about service, and I know a number of young mothers can go through that problem that when they have the children Mm -hmm. when their main job is being at home with the children cleaning up the sick the dirty nappies and Mm -hmm. all the rest Mm -hmm. of it that they get to the stage of feeling hey i'm not serving god anymore i i'm in this uh, bypass over here but that's not true is it doesn't have to stop there at all i mean as you know doug i've got a six-year-old i've got a two and a half year old and a nothing year old coming in August. Uh, and my wife Naomi gets to, to, to do more one to ones than, than I do in a week. No problem at all. She goes out to the tots and tinies things. Some of them are Christian ones run specifically to get non Christian mums and their toddlers to come in and, and they sit and have a cup of tea, watch the kids pl- play. They've built relationships up there. She goes to some non Christian ones and she's building relationships there. And people have started coming to the things that I'm putting on mm. in the church, our family services and things like that. And people have started coming to that on the back of the tots and the tinies, which is which is for my money probably the most successful at the moment arm of, of outreach in our church. Mm. Mm. Now Yes, okay, you've got to change the nappies. I, and I, I put my hand up. I like changing nappies. There's something about being helping somebody who's helpless. Mm. <laughs> there really is, you know. And, and okay, it stinks, but it's, <laughs> it's lovely. It's, you know that you're helping someone who, if you didn't do that thing, it would go wrong, yeah. you know. So um, it, it, it's a lovely thing, but it doesn't have to stop there. It really doesn't have to stop. There's a whole ministry there. School runs. Mm-hmm. Picking your kids up. If you've got something on in school, you're meeting other mums, other dads. There's a whole ministry there, believe mm-hmm. me. And and um, the, the the ladies in Kamal then are really making it work for the Lord. Really mm-hmm. making it work, you know. They've got all sorts going on mm-hmm. through that. I, I know we're three men sitting here today, but uh, we're all married. And certainly uh, uh, Dominic hasn't had the pleasure of changing dirty nappies nope. or his own uh, nope. kids' dirty nappies yet. He'll anyway, see but, what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Julie and I have... and. Please, can we encourage uh, the, the, the young mums out there? I know some of you will be feeling, because uh, I, I know what my wife felt uh, back in those days. Please see it is God has given you that wonderful responsibility of that new life. And so the input into that life is very much part of your vital, calling and part of your service. Vital, yeah. But as Julian was saying there, because of that young life and because of the places it takes you to or he or she i must say it takes you to uh, you have opportunity of meeting others in the same need maybe they don't have the lord and they're not coping at all well what an opportunity yeah, so amen. please can we encourage you uh, as far as that is concerned can we, we we've got a few comments here which i'm going to bring in but can we just develop this take it just a, a little stage further mm-hmm. here. Um, in in the Greek, you have this word doulos. Yep. Now, many know that because one of the OM ships was called <laughs> doulos, but I'm not <laughs> sure many really know <laughs> what the word meant. But it, it, it means bond servant or yeah. bond slave, mm-hmm. really. That, 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 mm-hmm. That's the heart of it. Um, in what sense are we the Lord's slaves? Mm-hmm. Julian, take it first, yeah. Okay. I, I always read bond servant as a slave of, of obligation. Um, the way I read it, at least, and you know I read things in a very unique way. Um, but to be a bond ser- ser- servant or a bond slave is somebody that's a slave out of an obligation or a duty to something. 